Ours is a God of everyday miracles. The sun rises and the sun sets, and Christ shimmers in all of creation. Each moment, each breath is sacred. Every act of courage, each kindness given, calls us to remember that God is with us. Grace and peace to you from God and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome home, children of God. Welcome home. Let us pray. You are above us, O God, you are within. You are in all things yet contained by no thing. Yours is the presence without whom there is no present. Lead us to the heart of this moment that we may hear the heartbeat of your eternal presence. For at the beginning of time and at the end, you are God and we bless you. In the opening of the day and at its close, in our waking and our sleeping, you are God and we bless you. So teach us to seek you in all that has life, that we might see you as the light of life. Teach us to search for you in our own depths, that we might find you in every living soul. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from John 14. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father and he will send another companion, a paraclete, who will be with you forever. This companion is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor recognizes him. You know him because he lives with you and will be with you. I won't leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live too. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father. You are in me, 
and I am in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them loves me. Whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and will reveal myself to them. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. My wife's great-great-grandfather was a missionary in Persia, and we now have a Persian cowbell from him hanging in our kitchen, and each night it calls us to the table. They tell the story that he was on his way home from the mission field when he was delayed entering the UK and missed his ship. He was rather disappointed as it was the maiden voyage of a brand new ship departing from Southampton on the 10th of April in 1912. Now, my wife comes from a very long line of talented Presbyterian ministers. Full-time ministry skipped a couple of generations, and her father, like her grandfather, was a talented Presbyterian petroleum engineer in Texas. But her father, like his daughter, was also a gifted preacher and would rework old family sermons to glean the timeless truth from those family notes. In the late stages of his cancer, he reflected, I do not see the healing of my body as proof of God's providence, proof of God's goodness. I believe in the God of everyday miracles. The sun rises and the sun sets, the stars spin in the heavens, and the earth is full of the glory of God. This life has been a gift, he said, and there will be a time to return the gift to the giver. I remember Dick and his words, and I often remember the final stanza to a most poignant prayer often said at funerals. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days here are accomplished, enable us to die as those who go forth to live. For we know that living or dying, our life is in you and nothing in life or in death will be able to separate us from your great love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I do believe in the God of everyday miracles, simple and profound moments that pull us into that greater awareness that we belong to God. And nothing, politics or pandemic, cancer, economic crash, nothing can separate us from God. And on this morning, as we look at going back into lockdown, however limited it might be, I know that my nerves are a bit frayed and my pandemic fatigue is setting in and I'm getting antsy. I need to be reminded of that prayer, that truth. In weeks like this, I'm glad that Dick continues to teach me in simple and profound moments like when I see his grandchildren enjoying jam and toast as their grandfather would have and their faces are smeared and they taste and see the goodness of the jam and I think they taste and see that God is good. I hear Dick's words and I'm remembered of his faith and in his faith, in Christ's faithfulness, I find my own faith. I believe in the God of everyday miracles. Who has been a source of faith in your life? Where do you go for hope and courage when the chips are down? And what is the ground on which you place your feet when faith feels so fleeting? It seems to be. In these difficult days, we could do worse than to stand in the faith of our fathers, than to hold on to the hope of our mothers. We could do worse than to hold tight to the hope that is ours. I will not leave you orphaned, Jesus says. God is always present to us even when we struggle to be present to God. And God is especially present to us in times of trouble and stress and loss. Now, as Jesus begins to speak more about his journey to the cross, his disciples are looking for answers and for comfort. And he shares this with his disciples. I will ask the Father and he will send another companion 
who will be with you forever. The Greek word here is paraclete, which means one who comes alongside. And it can be translated as intercessor or consoler, advocate and comforter. The companion, the consoler, the comforter is our assurance of God's presence with us now and beyond forever. And as I like to say, Karl Barth always remembered, in Christ we see God everywhere. So to speak of a God of everyday miracles is not a distant, uninvolved deity, but is to speak of the God of creation, the God of incarnation, and that sustained presence of the Spirit that the ancient Scots understood in those old Highland prayers. You are above us, O God. You are within. You are in all things, yet contained by no thing. It seems to me that the gift of the Spirit this week was to see my father-in-law's eyes in my messy-faced son's. It was to remember his assurance of the goodness of God, even as he faced his own mortality. It was to be reminded that each moment, each breath is sacred. And God is present to us, even as we struggle to be present to God. For God's love never ends. In such love, those hidden from our eyes are never truly gone from our hearts, and we do not need to be afraid. This day, this moment, this breath, may you know each moment is sacred. And may the Christ who shimmers in all creation surprise you each day. May Christ, who shimmers in all creation, surprise you each day with glittering moments when you can see again how light lives in everything, how it partners with dark soil to bring forth aster and lavender, rosemary and daffodils, a hundred kinds of squash, kale and cabbage, in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so now, friends, go out into the world in peace, have courage, hold on to what is good, and return no person evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering, and honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of that same Holy Spirit be and abide with you now and beyond forever. Amen.